Shalom, Shalom Rastafari. This is the the Sostenyao or the third um, Torah portion reading and feeding. And as we, um, this will be the second part of this, getting more square. Remember, it's also the coronation of His Imperial Majesty, um, the anniversary, the November second, and it's the eighty second year. And we've touched on. Um, We've preached and taught on some aspects of it the Holy Spirit shared with I and I, and that's another portion there. But there's a connection with Abraham, and here's one, and we call this our Abraham African identity, right? That, that Abraham, right, um, today would be called a, a black, either a black Syrian, you know, a black Syrian or an Arab. Now, of course, a black Arab or a Syrian, Right, actually, an Assyrian, but the Assyrians were ethnically speaking African people. In other words, what we see today is not what the archaeology, you understand, really um, um, bears witness to, and, and that's very clear in, in the many different cultures in the Middle East. Right, in fact, perhaps the only people more or less that have maintained their general geographic position um, are the Ethiopians, you understand, and, and not even fully in that extent because there's, there are Ferenjoch and, and other peoples even in Arabia and that part of our inheritance. But what we're going to touch on right here is um, Abraham, right? So Abraham, there's a likeness of Abraham or Abram. Remember, first he's Abram. So we kind of use this picture as a, as a starting point of Abram. Right, a starting point of Abram. So let's let's read the word right here, and, and the map here kind of shows um, Abram's or Abraham's journey from Ur, Ur, Ur of the Chaldees. Now, if you want to go a little deeper in your search, start to look up like the metaphysical in the metaphysical Bible dictionary the meanings of a lot of these names and places as they come in the Torah portion, reading and feeding, and then as um. Hebrews 10 and 20 reminds us, receive it in that new and that living way. So we're studying Torah, but not with a veil of our eyes, as the Jews who deny Moshiach, who deny Yeshua HaMoshiach, who deny Christ in his kingly character. So we, we have to, of course, show and to demonstrate, right? Now there's a likeness, right, of Abraham or Abram, right, to an Abraham to God, even God the Father, even Abba Kedus, even our Father, even Kedus Abba Tachin, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, our Black Lord and Savior of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Jesus Christos, of the Tachin. It's, it's interesting, even the, the Abraham sacrifice and, you know, of his one and only son, and there's a lot of other things, of course, and questions I know, but let's first of all touch on this right here, give a, get a basic overview. So now we have what's called here in the Schofield, um, the subscription is the fourth dispensation, the promise, the tesfa, the tesfa. So we're speaking about the tesfa from the call of Abram or Abram, Abram, right? To the giving of the law. To the giving of the law. So from Genesis 12 and 1 to Exodus 19 and 8. Here we have what's known as the Tesfa. What was the promise? Right? The promise. And there's a very important, um, not just theological, but it's, it's, it's scriptural, it's biblical, it's living, it's life that you need to understand concerning um, this dispensation of the promise and the call, and then the giving of the law, right? Now, the fourth, or the Abrahamic, what's known as the Abrahamic covenant. This is the fourth of what's known as the Abrahamic, right, or the Abrahamic covenant, right? So it says, now Yahweh, right, or now the Lord, L-O-R-D, but now Yahweh, or Egeziavihir, the sustainer, had said to Abraham, or Abram, get thee out of thy country. Told him to get out of your country and from thy kindred, from your relations, 
and from thy father's house and from your your fleshy physical father's household to a land that I will shew thee. Now we spoke about the shoeing before to show thee that to a land that he will be shown. Now I often say, well, imagine if this was many of us even today. Like, why I, can you send me a pic? You know, can you send me a text? You know what I mean? Can you give me the Google coordinates that I can look at it? So here's a situation that was basically facing Abram, right? Abram. Now, of course, there's there's additional um, information that some say is extra biblical, but in, in, in the Oriental or the Ethiopian canon of Scripture, from our Judeo, from the Jewish to the Christian or the Messianic or the, or the, the Christian, um, um, dispensation in Ethiopia. We have books like the Gedla Adam, um, even the the Kibr Neges, and all of these are part of our canon. So though the Gentiles will say that these are extra canonical, we basically say that 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 that's not our canon. So I mean that's your own because canon is actually comes from it's like Kana Kana. Um, canano, canano, cana, like like to stand straight, like a reed, a rod, a measurement. That's what the canon is, a reed, a rod, or a measurement. So we don't measure, right, according to their measurement, because if we do, we would um, trim our way to be loved by those who who cannot love us apart from uh, repentance. And they need to repent, and the Gentiles need to repent of their whitewash of all of Judaism and Christian and Christianity, because it is leading to to these days of tribulation. You understand? Because they're not willing to receive the the the, the love of the truth. You understand? And continue in their rebellion. But that is them. This is us. So the word says right here, right? Um, the word says right here that he's called, Abraham is called, that Abraham now is being called out of his, out of his country. And this is his country when we look at, you know, so we, we see this, this migration, right, this journey, what is said to be the journey, because a lot of this is desert, and, and there's roads, and we're roads, and ancient cities, and point to point here. It's only like you say a highway, in a sense. And this is said to be the route that he took, or, you know, that is believed to be the route that he took. Although that might be disputed, but we know that, generally speaking, this is more or less generally the route, right, out of there. All right, so this is a basic overview right here. So it says that in verse 2, he says, And I will make of thee a great nation. So he says to Abram, that he will make of him a great nation, and I will bless, right? He will bless thee and make thy name great. And truly, Abraham or Abraham's name is great among the, they say, the monotheistic or Judaism, Christianity, and, 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 and even among the Mohammedans or what they call Islam. You understand? Abraham is, 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 a great, is, is a great essential part of this particular story among these, these um, three um, religions, as they would say today, right? And, um, and thou shalt be a blessing. So Abraham would be a blessing, right? He would be a barakat, and he is a barakat, right? And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee, in the eye, shall all families of the earth, not just all of his families, but all the families, right, of the earth be blessed. Be blessed. Be baruch. Be blessed. Now, Here's what's very interesting about this portion. Uh, as we get into the Schofield, when it's talked about the fourth dispensation, was the dispensation of promise, of tesfa. And tesfa is a promise that's also hope, that's also expectation. We all might understand it better today as what you expect. You understand? Expectation, right? Expectation. And, 
you know, there's much to teach on that because I think there's a bad idea of promise and hope because of all the all the counterfeit promises and hopes in the seclorum in the world, how people use that, you know what I mean? But but Jah is true and every man let every man be a liar, but, but Yahweh is true. For Abraham and his descendants of who we are, even according to the flesh, it is evident that the Abrahamic covenant, according to Genesis uh, 15 and 18, and there's a note there in the Schofield, made a great change. It made a great change. Interesting that we've been in a time that many have been talking about change. And some of us see the changes going on, as actually being hopeful. Now, of course, others want to go back to the good old, you know what I'm saying, the good old America, you understand. But for many of us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, that wasn't really a good old America. You know what I'm saying? Once we recognize who we truly are, you understand, as a once lost but now found Beta Israel, it allows us, when we know our true ID, to think differently. They became distinctively the ears of promise. Whereas we are distinctively, even as Rastafari, the ears of this promise. That covenant is wholly gracious. And in that sense, it's unconditional. And, and there we agree on the unconditional, the, the, the promise of the King of Kings and His Christ, the promise of the true and living God and Father of Yeshua HaMushia is holy, completely, entirely gracious, and there was no condition. It, it didn't say, well, if you do this, then I'll do this. No, he basically said that come out, you know, get up. Basically, the only condition basically was to get thee out of thy country. That seems to be the only condition, right? Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and get away from your kindred your kinfolk, your fleshy, right, and from thy father's house, and also from your father's house, right, to a land that I will shew thee. Now, I think it's important when we look at the, the portion, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse of thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Remember one time we used to say that whenever they used to do some kind of thing against black folks, you know, like some real racist bleep against us and, and some real evil thing like kill somebody. There always would be like some storm or some big disaster economically, physically, materially. You remember what I'm saying? You know, it's like something even, it's like even John even shows us through, through, through nature, through the creation, who we are. That if, if most other people could not go through the helicorse that the lost sheep, the Beta Israel, have gone through and still are going through. Most people could not go through it. You know, and yet they want us to deny or they want to deny or minimize, right, um, the trans-Ethiopic Ocean or trans-Atlantic, the Ethiopian Hebrew Holocaust. They want to minimize it. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or dismiss it or just deny it straight out of hand. You know, but then that's another subject matter we need to deal with. But by doing that, they just curse themselves. Mm hmm By doing that, by saying, oh, you ain't this much, you're a bunch of niggas. You're a bunch of niggas. You ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? They curse themselves, and they don't recognize that. Mm hmm But the covenant, the al Kidan is entirely holy, gracious, and unconditional. The descendants of Abraham had but to abide in their own land. This is the key. They had to abide, to dwell in their own land, to inherit every barakat. Now, I think there's a message here for I and I, who are here in this north country. You know, seeing that Fasika Pesach is coming up and seeing what days and time we're in. And who knows? Yahweh, Yaukal, Gziavihir Yaukal, what will be December 21st, and whether this or that will happen, so forth and so on. But we're already seeing a lot of, a lot of um, prophetic signs, and so pathetic that people want to say, never mind. But they don't have a, they, they have not received the love of the truth that they might be saved, so they are damned. Right? It says ones who are, who are baptized and believe and are baptized, right? But those who don't believe, right, those who don't amen, 
don't accept the truth as truth, in spite of all the evidence, they are damned. So they, they're cursed. So this is why Abraham had to get him out, right, of, from his own country, from the country of his uh, nativity. Like, what's the country of our nativity? In other words, where were we born, most of us? Born in Babylon, like Zerubbabel, right? Like Zerubbabel, right? Born in Babylon. We have to get out. You know what I'm saying? But the first thing's first. You see, the first things in the new covenant, in the new and living way, is to receive Yeshua, our salvation, to enter into the spiritual and the metaphysical land, Yehovah's, by, by grace and by faith and in his grace and, and staying in that truth, that veritas, that, that illness, that emmet, and then the enemies and then the, and the demonics and the demoniacs and, and the, 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 the spiritual principality, are, are, they have no power because all power has been given, right, to Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. See, see, that's the benefit that we have in the Hadith or the Adis Kidan, in the Burit Hadasha. all right? But it's important for us to note this right here, that the descendants of Abraham had but to abide in their own land to inherit every blessing. But our ancestors didn't do that. I have an article I want to show you where the Yoruba say that they came out of Jerusalem for roughly 70 A.D. time and how they crossed that river, the river of Egypt, the river of Ethiopia. That's why, um, not Amos, well, Amos too, but here, Zephaniah, um, Zephaniah 3 and 9 and 10 speaks from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. My suppliant, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring my offering. So when are we ready to get ourselves ready to bring that offering? And we are, that, we are the blessing, the barakat. Don't you understand? Now, in Egypt, right, in Egypt, they lost their blessings. As we've been speaking about civil rights and this Rastafari revelation, by going down to that spiritual Egypt, the Negroes, so-called Negroes, the lost sheep, they lost their blessing. Mm -hmm. Now they had to depend on government, the government, right, and government cheese. You know what I mean? They had to depend on the kindness, you understand, of of. Of, of the same Gentiles who b bought and sold their ancestors. They can say all they want, well, it wasn't them, but they still benefit, you know, they still benefit from um, what their forefathers have done. You understand? And still in the Constitution it says that you and me are three-fifths of some Anglo-European, some Gentile. It just doesn't make sense. I don't know what three or what fifths they're, they're, they're talking about. But in Egypt... Just like the, the, the modern lost sheep in the spiritual Egypt, and you can look on the back of your dollar if you want to look for the spiritual Egypt. In Egypt, right, um, they lost their barakat, their blessing, but not, right, but not their covenant. So we have lost our barakat, our blessing. Let's understand the true blessing according to the Abrahamic covenant but not our covenant, not the covenant, but the blessings of the covenant, because we are now under, we, the lost sheep will have been under the curse, right? The curse is for disobedience, all right? Now, all praise be to Yeshua HaMoshiach, to Jesus Christos, because that is the removing of the curse, is what he did for us on the Meskel, the Meskelai on the cross, and to understand the significance of, of the cross in spirit and in truth, that sacrifice, that offering once for all, tefetzema, it is finished, right? Now, the dispensation of promise is said to have ended when Israel, when we rashly accepted the law. Some say that dispensation of promise ended when they rashly accepted the law, Exodus 19 and 8, Exodus 19 and 8. Right? Now, grace is sega, sega, right? In the Old Testament sense, it was called moges. Moges is, was, is grace or favor. But in the New Testament sense, it's sega, right? That sega, right? Grace had prepared a deliverer. That deliverer that grace had prepared is 
Mashu, Muse, Moses. Moses was that deliverer, and he provided a sacrifice for the guilty. Because guiltiness rests upon their conscience. So that guiltiness that rested upon their Old Testament conscience, it was through Moses that a sacrifice was provided for the guilty and for the guilty conscience. When the animal sacrifice comes in, you understand that animal sacrifice. And by divine melakotawi chayil, by divine power and authorization, brought them out of bondage. That's the Exodus right there. Brought them out of, right, out of bondage. And, and, and now, since I'm speaking about this right here, let me see if I can give you a little, a little visual of this right here. I think I have a, I think I have a little visual of this in a, in a New Testament, in a New Testament sense, right? In a New Testament sense um, of this Exodus. What's well, a similar Exodus for us in this New Testament sense? Let's see if we can um, scroll through this, right? Scroll through this and see if we bring this up if it's in here. And it might not be, um, but hopefully it is, right? Hopefully it is. And I'm going at lively pace. But, oh, there it goes right there. Now, somebody on the Wikipedia had put this particular pick up there, and we give thanks for it. Now, we only have a couple more minutes in this um in this portion, okay, it says too many images. We got too many images open right here. So um, we'll, we'll, this particular image, we'll return to this, right? We'll return to this because that, that actually concerns why Ethiopia, right, is under dispensation and this one right here, right? A dispensation, a repentance dispensation, and we are to pray for Ethiopia, you know, saying we're to pray that they repent, that they recognize their hat yat against the King of Kings. It, this is a this is an interesting pick right here. So we have the Hebrew Exodus to see, you know, um, the second Exodus. Now, if you want a scripture on this, it's Jeremiah chapter 23, and it speaks about the North Country, and this is where we're at, and we've been seeing these signs of the flood. Mm-hmm. Right? Haven't we seen this? And don't we know there's more to come, whether it's so-called man tinkering with nature or whether, whether it's because the Almighty is going to respond to all that tinkering and end it? You understand? We have to recognize this grace. So in the Old Testament, grace had prepared a deliverer, which is Moses. He provided that sacrifice for the guilty and by divine power brought them out of bondage, Exodus 19 and 4. But at Sinai, at Sinai, it is said that they exchanged grace, right? They exchanged grace for law. Now, the dispensation of promise extends, right? Extends from Genesis, this chapter, Genesis chapter 12, and this Torah portion, verse 1, to Exodus chapter 19, verse 8, and was exclusively Israelitish. It was exclusively of the Beta Israel. Right Now, the dispensation must be distinguished from the covenant, just like the dispensation that we, as once lost but now found, Beta Israel or Ethiopian Hebrews or black people have gone through for 400 plus years. And you can read more about it in Genesis chapter, chapter 15, even the land, the full extent of the promised land. Now, the former is a mode of testing. Right, the the former is a mode of testing, and the latter is everlasting because it is unconditional. Right, it is without that promise that he gave, it is without any condition. In other words, it cannot be revoked. But disobedience can can um can shut it off, can choke the line of that grace. Right? The grace is there. Like we have grace, we have blessing, we have riches, we have health already, but we don't receive it because of that lack of faith in his number one son, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, and in his word, his living word, in spirit and in truth. The law, or Torah, the law of Moses, did not abrogate the Abrahamic covenant. And we learn that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 15 to verse 18. But was an intermediate 
disciplinary dealing, quote, till the seed, till that seed, right, till which, till that seed, right, should come to whom the promise, to whom the promise was made, according to Galatians 3 and Galatians 4. Only the dispensation, which was a testing of Israel, as the 400 plus years has been a dispensation for us black Hebrews and Israelites and Ethiopian Hebrews here in the North Country and in the Caribbean and South and Central America and really throughout the world, but us over here in this region, we have a particular calling and responsibility. It was a test, a testing of Israel, and it ended Right, it ended at the giving of the law. Now it's interesting when we look at the giving of the law concerning the Beta Israel in the old covenant, and then when we look and we compare and we contrast, if we will, the giving right of the constitution right to Ethiopia by Kedamawi Haile Selassie and what happened in the betrayal. Right of Ethiopia and the great transgression against the King of Kings it is interesting when we recognize the roots and the Judeo-Christian connection and the Black Hebrew connection between the Ethiopians at home or those who are still in the land, and we over here after 400 plus years, ya aga riso kashi ametu wode aristu. Even after a millennium. We still have a divine right to return to the land. Now, there are other dispensations, right, as well, right? The other six dispensations is innocence, which was the first, conscience, which was the second. We have uh, human government, which was the, 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 the third. Then here we have the promise, which is the fourth. Then we have the fifth, which is law. Then we have the sixth which is grace, and the seventh dispensation. I want you to understand this, seeing that this is the 82nd Metasebiyah Memorial of the Nugusa Neges Zoda Baal, or the coronation of Moa and Bessazem Negeri Yehuda Kedamawi Haile Selassie Siyuma Ekeziyabi Her Nugusa Neges Ze Ethiopia of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. The seventh is kingdom is the Malkut on the Kabbalistic tree or the Mengist, the Mengist, right, the Mengist, right, the Mengista Negusa Neges. So there is more on this, and we'll touch on this when we get to Chapter 15, to, uh, to analyze and to also to summarize the Abrahamic covenant more in full. So what we have opportunity here is to basically introduce this Torah portion right, and to try to provoke um, you all, brothers and sisters, in love to, to study it more and to really see this connection, to receive the half of the story that hasn't been told until now and to recognize the time and to redeem the time because the days are evil. So Abram in the land, right, is the next section. We talk about worship, communion, and, um, and, and, and promise, Right, And in this chapter right here, and this is what the Schofield Study Bible, if you don't have a copy, you can go to our resource center on lojsociety.org, and you can um, download that um, there for free, as well as the Torah portions, right? And we're in the first Torah portion, um, um, Bere, Bereshit, right? Um, and this, is, this is, gives us a good summary right here, the call of Abram. So let's touch on the call of Avram from the summary in the Torah portion, volume 1, right? Here we have on page 177 that God, that, that Ha-Elohim, Baruch Hu, the true and living God, he told Avram to leave his native land and his father's house for a land that Ha-Elohim would show him. So he didn't know what this land looked like. You understand? Promising to make of him a great nation, right? This is the same promise that we as the Beta Arastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrews, the once lost but now found Beta Israel have, and to bless him, right, and to make his name great, 
and to bless those who bless him. Right? And to curse those who curse him. See, what Babylon don't recognize is that all their curses and the fact that Babylon's system is, 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 is cursed. It, it, it's really brock. I mean, they had problems before, but it had some serious fatal errors is because of how they curse Kedamawi Haila Selassie, how they curse Siyume Egeziavihir, how they curse the very elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. You understand? See, see they don't want you to recognize that significance. There's a big significance. That's a half of the story. Remember, the first shall be last. Now look at the first nation we have in the Bible is Ethiopia. Shall be the last. Right? And the last shall be the first. So we have um, following Elohim's command, right, that Abram following Elohim's command at about the age of 75, Right, about the age of 75, and let's move this over right here, about the age of um, 75, and let's show the land right here, a portion of the land, at the age of 70, at the age of 75, I don't know if this is like a 75-year-old, you understand, by the age of 75, what did Abram do? Abram took his wife, Sarai, right, and... His nephew Lot, or Lot, right, or Lewit, Lewit, uh, Lot, right, and the wealth and the persons that they had acquired in the place known as Haran, right, Haran, and if this is a little bit clearer, we'll be able to zoom in on Haran, right, that he had acquired in um, in uh, Haran. Right, the wealth that I think is actually more over here, right? The wealth that he had acquired in Haran, which was another place along his journey, and he traveled to the Terebinth or the Adbar Zaf to this kind of an oak tree, right? Like the Ormo. I like to liken it to the Ormo. If you look at the Ormo flag of Ethiopia, right, you'll see there's a big tree right there. And that's a connection. There's a very important connection. That, that helps us to bring the family together again in the covenant, in the Kal Kidan. So he traveled to the Terebinth of Moray, right, at Shechem, right, in the Canaan. This is the first part, right, the first part right there. Now, at this point, which we'll hopefully pick up on more in the next portion of this, but definitely read this for yourself. Download the free materials at Line of Judah society.org, the Torah portions over there, or, or you can download it and order a hard copy and also download other uh, resource uh, center material, study material from um, lojsociety.org. That info, sorry. Uh, that one is on Oh, oh my bad, my bad. .info. It's lionofjudahsociety.info. I just was updated that it's actually .info if you want to download the Torah portion, readings and feedings, the PDF of it. But we hopefully will announce it and, and also help to share this message with others who receive the, the teaching of His Majesty. So next coming up, we're going to have Ha Elohim appearing to Abraham, right, to tell him that, that Ha Elohim would assign the land to his ears, his Warashoch. Right, and Abram built an altar to Ha Elohim in Genesis, same chapter, chapter 12, verse 7. Abram then moved to the hill country that was east of Bethel, or Beit El, Bethel, right? And he built an altar to Ha Elohim there, and he invoked, this is what's interesting, he invoked Ha Elohim Beshem, Besim, right, by name. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 8. Now, then we have Abram, right, journeying toward the Negev, the Negev, or towards the south, the Azeb. Now, this is where it connects.